Hello, everybody. I'm Kevin Killian. <laughs> it's so great to be back in, we used to call it Greenwich Village when I was a boy. <laughs> I guess they don't use that term anymore. Hey, I'm going to read a few poems. This is from my new book, and I've been writing these poems about the elements. And this is the first one that I wrote, Hydrogen. I'm just guessing what's an element and what isn't, so I was right about this one. 75% of everything is hydrogen. Seems like a weighty responsibility for a colorless gas, but then I think of how wealth is distributed around the world and how millions of people slave and don't even have TV while a handful of plutocrats grow rich on their labor. Hydrogen, a low rent element, still gets to be number one on the famous table. You know, I was thinking of, they have like a table of these elements, the periodic table. And I was thought of it like the one in the Last Supper, like a long table. It still gets to be number one on the famous table, like Christ dominating that Last Supper. Even the Da Vinci Code acknowledges that hydrogen is, like Jesus, a human god, one of the people with the ordinary love impulses all of us feel. In his case, they were for Judas, the man in the corner, scowling from guilt. The point is, everybody has these feelings. It's not just you and me. I was thinking of writing, I'm writing this to Dodie. It's not just you and me wandering through this world like we're invisible, we're neglected, our seminar tanked, and nobody wants to publish our poems. I've done 15 elements now, and only one, emerald, turned out to be not an element. And this one is my latest one, it's called Mercury. Yeah, it was an element. <laughs> but I don't know much about elements. You know, I wasn't, didn't go to college. <laughs> when I broke the glass of thermometer, out ran the mercury in one liquid blob, matter calling to matter like not one of its molecules wanted to be parted from another, even for a moment. That's the beautiful thing about that element, that it sticks together with itself. Mercury was supposed to be so mercurial, like Ariana Raines, the poet, who we were celebrating her book, Mercury, at, in Chicago for the AWP. She and Dodie, and Peter and Lewis Warsh reading together in a bar, and she canceled due to snow in New York. But the crowd learned she had deputized Thurston Moore to read for her, so they were assuaged. But then it turned out Thurston had missed the same plane. Joel Craig, the MC, came out and had to announce that they wouldn't be getting Ariana nor Thurston but me, and this one woman sitting at a round table by herself, right in front of the mic, by herself except for 14 bottles of beer surrounded her. When she heard the news, she smashed a bottle on the table and she screams, fuck that! And she bolted out into the snow. And I got up and read thinking, oh, worst auspices ever. And my mind ran clear, and I declared to myself, I would be Ariana for half an hour. Just assume her identity. To my aid came Thespis on silvery wings. I was more Ariana than she herself had ever been, I'm sure. 
And as I read her words, I understood the difficult section of Mercury that's called Thursday, as has nobody else before or since. I was writing it on stage, live, giving it to my fans, word by word. And I realized that he, the missing Thurston, was the god they had coined the word Thursday for. For he would bless us on a Thursday if we leaned on him. It could be any day of the week. It could be all the molecules in his body entering and filling mine. I would be a day. I'd run around after myself. I would cohere. And when I finished, the silence swelled around me, profound. Then a burst of sustained applause. And even the woman out in the snow was sobbing, for she hadn't heard me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this one's called Pickpocket. And um, I remember reading this at Naropa the last time I was there, and Claudia Rankine was reading with me. And I'm halfway through my poem, and I was like, oh my god, this is not the one to read in front of Claudia. Um, <laughs> Pickpocket. Last night, whistling, I passed by their alley, saw them in a sidelong blink of light from traffic, a speeding car. Then I went home, dreamed of gold skies, black money. I felt so stupid. To talk about them feels stupid. I'm the sullen red sun. So it's a poem with three characters, and there's me, like a kind of aimless teenage boy, doesn't know anything about love or sex or life. And then there's Bernadette, the figure from the, uh, the heroine of the f song by the Four Tops, Holland Dozier, Holland song, Bernadette, who's the ideal woman who every man longs to embrace. Bernadette leans from tenement windows. Sailors keep searching world after world for Bernadette, and her arms are black, her outstretched, pro-offered palms all milky, and Claudia was there, and she goes, I said, Claudia, is this all right? She goes, no. It's, it, it's only all right because you know what you're doing. <laughs> from them, from the palms, dr drop coins. Coins drop into pickpockets, pockets freely. And pickpocket is the character from the Brisson film, the petty criminal who who's gets into jail over and over, and he never learns, and he never knows why. Except at the very end, he's kind of redeemed. Pickpocket's face is pocked. His arms are pocked. I threw his face in the lake to make it ripple. He smokes a cigar to an orange hot hole in his face, a glow. At night, the sun's a kid brought behind the woodshed and abased. I'll read this poem, Valentine, for Andrew Durbin. It says here that suspended animations come a long way since bygone Lazarus's Passover plot times. It says Walt Disney never really died. He's lying on a bed of chilled cubes somewhere in Anaheim, laughing, taking that taking what his associates laughingly call a holiday on ice. If I had only life to live, I would live it with a blonde like you. Frozen roses are frozen red. Frozen violets are frozen blue. I just have two more to read to you. This one is X for John Giorno. X is to ax as H is to hatchet. X is excessive and he is so hesitant and the sun is a shame to be over this island. It marks the spot why he is so hesitant. 
H is for hungry, and X is for hesitant. X marks the spot, and he is so excellent. It's a just a, um, it's such a magical evening to be reading with such great poets, and in honor of Giorno's 80th birthday, this is my poem coloring book. Did you ever play with a coloring book when you were an adult? Oh, the worst. We had to, I had to give a workshop at the a nonprofit artist-run space in San Francisco, and they gave everybody coloring books asked us to color this in. And I'm like, I'm the leader of this workshop. But it reminded me of a horrible moment in childhood. I was coloring in the picture, thinking of how I always like to stay between the lines. Or did I like that especially? Or was it always that I wanted the gold star certain teachers would award me? I've, I think I've always had this problem of, am I writing this because I want to or just for, you know, the gold star. Pictures of geese, easy to color. Pictures of rabbits and complicated house dresses, no thanks. Early on, boy learns the easy way out. I was coloring in the picture and the crayon seemed unresponsive to the facts of a goose the facts of the boy. Uh, there's Santa. What color is Santa? Well, kind of red, but not the red in the box. So that's why I'm talking about a time when before they had more than 12 colors and crayons. And his face was red. I sat on his lap, saw the sheer Irish weight of scotch in his cheeks. In despair, I stood and tried picking on the other children's crayons, swiping them into my pockets, turning to crime, I guess. And there on the teacher's desk, a packet of stars gleaming gold, like the mirrors of Shanghai. And a little voice screamed within my brain, take them, take the stars, take back the materials of specialized labor. Take the applause. Why make the thing when you can take the reward? It was done in a minute, and I embarked on a colorful career. Thank you, everybody.